Today, will regulated militia be necessary to the security of a free state? The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. I'm glad that you're with us on the program today. Uh, Joining us here in just a matter of moments, Jim Wallace of the Gun Owners Action League in Massachusetts, where we have seen um, probably the most honest gun ban bill introduced to date, uh, a bill that would define, quote unquote, assault weapons as all semi-automatic rifles and shotguns. All of them. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a rimfire 22. Doesn't matter. If it's a 50 caliber. Nope. Doesn't matter. All semi-automatic firearms. Well, rifles and shotguns. I'm not sure why they didn't include uh, semi-automatic handguns in the bill. I mean, if you're going to you know, try to pass something flagrantly unconstitutional, why not go for the gusto? But uh, we're going to talk about it with Jim Wallace of the Gun Owners Action League as uh, gun owners in Massachusetts get ready to face an onslaught of uh, anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment, anti-civil rights legislation. Take a look and a listen. Jim, thanks very much for coming on the program, sir. It's good talking with you today. Hey, welcome back to the Second Amendment Battleground State. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I got to ask, just based on some of the bills that we've seen introduced here, has it ever been this bad in Massachusetts? Well, you know, what we're seeing, Cam, really is, um, a result of Bruin. We're, we're legitimately seeing a tantrum, um, like a five year old with states like California, New York, and now Massachusetts and, and just a handful of others. And I, I think what we're going to see is even more things, uh, filed to what I call punitive action mm-hmm. because they're so angry that the court finally recognize the Second Amendment as a civil right, and not a Second Amendment civil right. I mean, sorry, not a second-class civil right. So they're, they just can't take it, and, and they're acting like a spoiled child. Um, as a matter of fact, to the point where I've told many in the press that they're acting like Governor Wallace after Brown v. Board of Education. You know, it, it, it's kind of funny to see progressives emulating Governor Wallace, but that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, sadly, I think you're right. Um, and, and, you know, we've seen that comparison made. Uh, Daniel Schmutter, uh, a firearms attorney down in New Jersey, uh, in uh, his filing, taking on New Jersey's carry laws, referred to, you know, massive resistance on the part of a Southern governors. And and again, I mean, you know, you go back to that, that wholesale deprivation of a civil right, and that is the immediate example that comes to mind. Unfortunately, you're right. Democrats are following that same playbook. Now, they're, you know, the difference this time is that uh, rather than depriving a, a a class of American citizens of virtually every civil right, now they're trying to deny every American uh, access to one particular civil right, right? The, the right to keep and bear arms. But you look at some of the bills that have been introduced here, Jim, uh, like Linsky's, uh, uh, is it Linsky or Lipsky? Linsky, right? Linsky, yeah. Linsky. Yeah, yeah. Dave, Dave Linsky, yeah. So this gun ban that just defines uh, assault weapons, quote unquote, as all semi-automatic rifles and shotguns, all of them, center fire, rib fire, doesn't matter, all of them. Doesn't, doesn't uh, matter. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, is that, is that something that is sort of a, uh, like an, an aspirational bill in Massachusetts or is that for gun control activists, or is this something that is legitimately on the table this year? Well, you got to remember that in 2016, the attorney general woke up, held a press conference with no warning, Mm -hmm. and changed the definition of assault weapon by redefining a single word, um, the word copy. So, you know, in Massachusetts, (laughs) anything is possible. You got to remember, she's governor now. Yeah. So, and, and, and the person who took the attorney general spot, if it's possible, I, I think is worse on the Second Amendment than Laura Healy was. So, um, you know, anything in this state is, is we, we don't discount anything, unfortunately. So it's just a matter of, you know, what's going to happen. But we have been told that the speaker has ordered a top down review of all of the gun laws. And supposedly they're going to schedule some kind of listening tour across the state, um, which that should be interesting. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, and when the Globe reporter told me about this top down, she said, what do you think of it? And I said, I think it's an excellent idea. I think they should do a top down review and that anything that they cannot justify with hard data, because this stuff has been around for a quarter of a century, has to be repealed. 
because the other thing, Cam, which is interesting when you talk to these folks, uh, especially the ones that are having a tantrum, mm -hmm. is the key phrase in the decision, the Bruin decision, was that it's not a second-class right. So that means whatever you do to the second, you have to do to the rest. Yeah. And and they look at you in absolute horror. And it's like, well, that's what it means, that it's not a second-class right. So all the laws, all the regulations, all the restrictions you put on the second, you have to put on the rest. So... It's going to be very interesting to see how this is handled. Absolutely. Or, you know, conversely, the better way would be to uh, you know, uh, protect the Second Amendment right to keep our arms just as much as we protect our other rights, which, yeah. uh, you know, I realize Massachusetts lawmakers, that's probably not the way many of them look at it, but uh, that's, that's my perspective. Um, so beyond Linsky's bill, and I know we're really early on in the legislative session, there are probably still some bills that are going to be filed, but... What yeah. are some of the things that you are, uh, are already, you know, what are some of the things that are popping up on your radar right now? Well, again, you know, the, the, the whole top down review is, is going to be interesting because we're also hearing, and we're not the only ones hearing it, that there's going to be a change at the speaker position, uh, that the current speaker said he would take it for now, but wanted to hand it off fairly soon. Um, I, I think Ron's looking to retire uh, and, or at least step back. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. he's not a young guy, but, um, you know, he's he's served a little bit of time there, no pun intended. Um, so <laughs> just since we've already had three speakers in the last, what, 20, 30 years that all turned out to be convicted felons. So <laughs> serving time is, is kind of a tradition. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and there's another one, Kim, not to get too, too off topic, but... Uh, Former Speaker Sal DeMacy did eight years in federal prison and got out because he legitimately had cancer. Uh, but now he wants to be a lobbyist. And the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts <laughs> said, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, really? Good, really? good okay. government at work right there. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah, I can't, if you know, if I get a drunk driving conviction, I, I'll never own again the rest of my life in this state but you do eight years in prison and sure you can lobby the state house why not yeah still uh, in the ear of uh, lawmakers see many christmas yeah, especially since it was because he took bribes as a speech <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness oh. you just can't make it up in this state but, no uh, you, you can't um yeah and, uh, listen before we run out of time i want to ask about uh one other thing we've been watching this in california actually where uh, there was a state law that uh, allowed researchers to uh, uh, access all kinds of personal information about gun owners. Federal judge uh, recently tossed a, a lawsuit challenging that law. But you've got something similar, it sounds like, in Massachusetts, only even worse going on. Yeah, we actually passed the law back in, I think it was 1986, uh, that protected the names and addresses and the, the basic information of, of gun owners in Massachusetts. And as I understand the story, um, the Boston Globe had threatened to print the names and addresses of every gun owner in the state in their Sunday edition. And uh, again, as I understand the story, the bill was drafted, filed, and signed into law within 48 hours because even the people who don't like the Second Amendment understood the dangers of that. Um, not, not only are you telling people who owns guns, you're telling people who are defenseless. Yeah. Really. So... Um, so that was a very important law that they put in place and a couple of legislators over the years have tried to repeal it, but e even in discussions with them, they, they didn't really comprehend, you know, how dangerous it could be for people. So that law has been in place for quite a long time. Well, a little while back, a couple of weeks, maybe, um, we were made aware that the Farmers Record Bureau had received so many uh, requests on gun transfer informations that they just simply posted a database up online for anybody to access with every, well, let's put it this way, every reported gun transfer going back, I think, almost 20 years. And they don't give your name, but they assign everybody uh, a numerical ID number. And once you understand how to search it, you can decode this thing pretty fast because 
it, it gives your ID number, it gives your town, it gives your zip code, and then the specific gun you bought, who you bought it from, what their ID number is, whether it's a retailer or a person, and you can unravel this thing pretty quickly. And the language in the law is very clear because it said, it says, uh, you know, divulging or tending to divulge uh, the information, which if that's not tending to divulge, what is? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, it's actually kind of scary that anybody who wants to decode this thing can easily get through it. So, um, you know, it, they've actually, they've made a dangerous situation out there. Yeah. And we know the Boston Globe has the information. So what are they going to do? You know, yeah. the, the very the very entity that we protected it from <sighs> in the 80s is the one that now has it. So um, pretty scary stuff. So we're actually uh, teaming up with Con 2A. And uh, I guess uh, according to the law, we have, before we can actually take court action, we have to notify them okay. and give them a the chance to correct it. Um, you know, the only correction is to take it down, but then, you know, it's already out there because you can, it, it's not just a file you can access, you can download. Oh, geez. So, you know, you yeah. can download the entire thing and it's a huge file, huge file. I so, imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other problem is, as a matter of fact, somebody pointed out um, uh, last night to me that, Hey, you know, when you look at that, the, my updated information is I don't live in the state anymore, so it looks like a retailer broke the law and sold me a handgun. And I said, oh, God, okay, one more problem with it, right? So he goes, I was, I lived in the state when I bought it, but now it says I don't live there, but it says I bought it from that retailer. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know yeah all um, right so the so the, the next step then is to uh again try to give them a chance to quote unquote rectify this uh but if not yeah, it sounds like you guys and com 2a are uh, looking at litigation oh sure for sure um yeah i i'm not sure if the the, the attorney is going to send the letter today or tomorrow it'll be this week anyway okay um yeah it, you know it, it reminds me of remember the old tr amendment that we used to talk about a yeah. long time ago mm-hmm. about the so-called, you know, crime guns. And that's when we found out that, uh, the other side and even politicians were using the crime gun data incorrectly because they didn't understand that just because it's labeled a crime gun doesn't mean it was ever used in a crime. Yeah. And back then we, we found out that 75% of the guns in the so-called crime gun database had nothing to do with the crime ever. They were just simply traced. So it's, you know, right up that alley again. Yep, absolutely. Well, Jim, listen, I know you've got a, a lot of uh, uh, fights going on here in Massachusetts. We're going to be touching base uh, again very, very soon. But uh, I would encourage every gun owner in Massachusetts, if you're not already involved, uh, check out the Gun Owners Action League, gold.org. Uh, get involved because, the you know, the, the assault on your rights is happening right now. Uh, and Jim Wallace, thank you again for everything you do, sir. It's good talking with you today. I appreciate Jim joining us on the program. And uh, yeah, we're going to be watching what's going on in Massachusetts and other uh, blue states like New York, New Jersey, California, Washington State, Maryland, New Mexico. Yeah, we 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 will be covering it all at uh, Bearing Arms. Right now, though, let's turn our attention to today's Armed citizen story. Our good deed of the day and our recidivist report will start there with a case out of Rantoul, Illinois, where a, a man from Urbana... Uh, convicted of a robbery back in 2021, has received a more probation for that. Yeah, that's what he got the uh, first time around, too, by the way. Um, and when he did not abide by the terms of his parole or his probation, Garrett Moore was sentenced to more probation. I don't even have the words. Again, at, at the same time, Illinois Democrats are trying to turn law-abiding gun owners into criminals by banning the possession of their modern sporting rivals, unless they register them, of course, with the state, banning the possession of quote-unquote large-capacity magazines, which, by the way, is just a made-up term that is defined differently if we're talking about a rifle magazine versus a handgun magazine in Illinois. Uh, Meanwhile, you got guys like 22-year-old Garrett Moore, who pleaded guilty in March of 2021 for robbery for his role in mugging a man outside of an apartment complex. He was originally sentenced to 30 months of probation, 106 days in jail, ordered to do public service, get a substance abuse evaluation. But he admitted back in December that he hadn't done those things. And he was resentenced this week to 
uh, more probation and another 50 hours of public service, as well as once again ordered to get mental health and substance abuse evaluations. Yeah. How about that? So you commit a crime, you plead guilty, you get a slap on the wrist, you don't do what you're supposed to do, and you get another slap on the wrist. How about that? That's what the justice system looks like in uh, Illinois these days. Meanwhile, today's armed citizen story, Wichita, Kansas, uh, a bit of a misleading headline here. Wichita man shot by a gas station employee after a fight breaks out near downtown. How about Wichita man shot by a gas station employee after man assaults gas station employee? Because that, according to the actual news story, uh, is what happened early Sunday morning at a, a jumpstart gas station in downtown Wichita, near downtown Wichita. When officers arrived, they found a 28-year-old man who had been shot in the upper body. Investigators learned that the man had gotten into an argument with two jumpstart employees after he was asked to leave the business. The man refused and then started fighting with the employees. One of the employees pulled out a gun and, quote, fired at the suspect after the suspect began to attack him a second Time, according to police, the uh, 28-year-old employee of the store is cooperating with detectives right now. This would look to be a case of uh, self-defense uh, based on the available evidence, but we will keep our eyes on the story. We'll give you any more details as they become available. Finally, today, our good deed of the day in the right place at the right time, willing and able to do the right thing. A uh, New Jersey man who uh, saw a uh, homeless individual outside of a, a gas station barefoot in January, and decided that uh, he wanted to do something about it. So he ended up taking the shoes off of his feet and giving them to that individual. Uh, Caught on camera by a guy named John Burrell III, who's the owner of Uncle John's Barbecue Stand in Claymont, Delaware. Um, But the uh, gentleman in question, Jawan Jones, who says that uh, he's 24 years old, so he didn't realize that this had been captured on camera. He said he just saw a man who was barefoot on a cold morning and knew he needed help. Uh, Jones works the overnight shift at the uh, Target Distribution Center in Logan Township, New Jersey. Uh, pardon me, I've said that he was a New Jersey resident, but no, he actually lives in Delaware, works in New Jersey. He said everyone around him has always taught him to be kind and look out for others. He said my mom always used to say be grateful for what you have because you don't have to have anything. And he said my mentor and my coach, Kerry Galloway, always told me to help somebody. If you can help just one person, you never know. That person can take that blessing. And help someone else. So in the right place, at the right time, willing and able to do the right thing for someone in need, Juwan Jones of uh, Wilmington, Delaware, we thank you for your very good deed. Now, that is all the time we've got for you on this edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company. I want to thank you for being a part of the program as always. We'll be back tomorrow with even more Second Amendment news and information from all around the nation. But in the meantime, be sure to check out BearingArms.com throughout the day. We'll get you covered in all the uh, late-breaking news as it happens. If you like what you see, I also encourage you to become a VIP member at Bearing Arms. All you have to do, go to bearingarms.com slash subscribe. Use the promo code GUNRIGHTS, and you can get a significant savings on your VIP membership. As our way of saying thanks for showing your support, we're going to give you exclusive news stories and analysis you won't find anywhere else because your support does make a difference, and it really does matter. So thank you again. We'll be back again tomorrow. But until then, be well, be safe, and be free.